Hello and welcome to Post 4G Day 4. The presentations lined up for this afternoon are 1. Zone Builders, a cross-platform and language agnostic tool for generating zoning systems for urban analysis and modeling by Dustin Carlino, Robin Lovelace and Martin Tenikas. Second, we have Hello state. And welcome to Post 4G Day 4. Sorry, the there is an echo. Are 1. Zone Builders, a cross-platform and Sorry for that. Um, second, our presentation is on state and marine application of Node Mic Mac by Sylvian Pauline. And lastly, we have building DCP's housing database, NTC Planning's data engineering team's latest data product by Amanda Doyle. Let me officially begin our first session by briefly introducing our speakers. Dustin is a software engineer living in Seattle. He has been interested in cartography open source software and making transportation more efficient for over a decade. Robin works at the University of Leeds as Associate Pr Professor of Transport Data Science. He is the lead developer of a national active travel mapping project to design strategic cycle networks nationwide. He, also, he has also written open source software packages and books including Geocomputation with R. And finally, we have Martin who has a PhD in game theory and is currently working at Statistics Netherlands as data scientist on data visualization, statistical programming, and the use of big data in official statistics. Martin is the lead developer of the popular R package TMAP and developer of many Force 4G tools for geographical analysis and data visualization. If you have any questions you'd like to direct to our speakers, Please send them to us on Venueless and I'll pass them along. Without further ado, I'll play you the really nice video. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our talk on Zone Builders, which is basically a project for creating cross platform and language agnostic tools for generating zoning systems for urban analysis and modeling. My name's Robin Lovelace, and I'm going to be presenting the tool on behalf of the team. And I've got the list of other authors there. So before I talk about the uh, tool itself, I just wanted to say a little bit about it, as you can see. Um, so just a little bit about us. I'm a researcher at the um, Institute for Transport Studies at, in the University of Leeds. I'm an Associate Professor of Transport Data Science, and I'm really interested in how new technologies and data sets can support sustainable transport planning policies. Uh, Martijn um, will be, uh, can introduce himself on the interactive side, but he is a statistician based in uh, Rotterdam and works on big data and is uh, an experienced R programmer. And then finally, we have Dustin on the other side of the USA, who's based in Seattle. And um, he is the, uh, a software engineer and the lead developer of the uh, AB Street um, city simulation software. So um, yeah, why did we all join forces to get into uh, this zone builder project? So the first reason is that uh, it's difficult to compare cities using the default zoning system. So focusing in on Buenos Aires, you can see that uh, you have a zoning system, but if I was to try and compare this area of uh, Buenos Aires, for example, in terms of population density with another city, let's say London, um, I wouldn't be comparing like with like because the zoning systems are actually different. The, the shapes of the zones vary quite a lot. So there's a need for consistency to compare different cities. And um, we have faced this problem in our own research. So we all of us have needed a general solution. And we just started talking about it, Martine and myself, and came up with this idea of a um, consistent zoning system for comparing different cities. 
we also thought this would be a fun programming challenge. So um, it's actually really good opportunity uh, to learn R, for example, because it's quite a simple concept, just building these zones. And for myself, I wanted to explore a different language. So it was an excuse to start playing with some Rust code. So I'll come on to that later. Um, yeah, so these zoning systems can be used in different ways. Um, the first of them, I think, is just as a way to navigate in a city. And Martin and I have used this to um, locate each other when we're visiting each other. So I visited him when he was visiting in, in Oxford and he came to, to visit me in Leeds. And basically the zoning system allows you to um, state where you are on the map in quite a broad way. So addresses can be very long and very precise. But if you just want to know roughly what part of the city you can say, oh, I'm in the Northwest segment. Um, or with this zoning system, you can use uh, the labels. So the way that the zoning system uh, works or that the default zoning system works is by um, each of these rings is a letter and then each of the segments radially going round is a number from one to 12. So this is a clock board uh, zoning system. And it allows you to say, for example, oh, well, we're going to go back to my place, which is in C01 of the city. And then later on, we're going to go to Bradford, uh, which is in E09 of the Leeds zoning system. So I don't know if this is going to catch on, but that's um, the first kind of informal possibility of how you could uh, use the zoning system. So uh, that that's just the first idea, which is more kind of prosaic um, everyday life. But more seriously, and thinking about urban analytics and uh, research, you can use the zoning system to uh, communicate. And I think this diagram really shows the value of having a consistent geographical grid. So you've got four maps of London. It's all exactly the same data. And it um, firstly highlights the importance of thinking about your level of geographic aggregation and the modifiable area unit problem. And in A, that's kind of the raw data where you've got, um, I think they're one kilometer uh, grid cells, and you can see that those are um, very um, dotted. So you, you get a lot of value, but there's so much data there that it's kind of hard to work out the general pattern. In fact, I think that that is higher than um, one kilometer. That that may actually be 100 meter grid cells. But in any case, um, that's one way of uh, presenting the data. The default in London and many cities is to aggregate to the most commonly used uh, system, in this case, which is the borough level. And uh, that results in B. But there's a problem there, which is the uh, shapes are not consistent. So that means you can't compare London with other cities, but it also distorts the map. So C is um, basically a consistent zoning system and it shows this really clear pattern. So the data actually looks different and you can understand it differently. And then finally, D is the outline from B plus um, the zoning system in C. And I think that shows the value. I think D is a great way of communicating that information. You can see this very clear pattern of reduced uh, levels of air pollution as you get further away from the center, which is slightly harder to see in the other data sets. So um, that's exploring data within a single city. Um, but I think the most powerful use of the, this kind of zone builder approach, which is having consistent zones, is um, comparing between different cities. And um, yeah, the, I think the best example here is just comparing London and Paris. So if you look up the population of London and Paris, you might think that London's a much bigger city, but that this, uh, when you put it in a consistent grid, that shows you that um, in fact, that may just be because 
Paris has a different definition of the city center, which is much smaller. And in terms of population density, they're actually quite similar in extent. So um, yeah, that um, really illustrates how this can be used to compare different uh, places. So this is um, comparing um, populations. Um, and then in terms of uh, data analysis, this is a comparison between UK cities in terms of <clears throat> how many people, how, how safe is it to cycle in different cities? And if we were to use just the um, administrative boundaries, you wouldn't be able to get a direct comparison. Whereas here you can see that the general pattern is that um, you have blocks of high risk areas away from the city centre. It's rarely the city centre, which is the most dangerous place. Um, and this is in units of how many people are killed and seriously injured per billion kilometres cycled. And it also, also very quickly flags up the kind of danger hotspots. Um, so po policymakers could use this to identify where do you need to invest in safe uh, cycling infrastructure. So there's some of the reasons. And I wanted to start off with the motivation before going into the technology. But now we've, I'm going to talk a bit about the technology. And um, yeah, so primarily in the first instance, um, the software was implemented in the R programming language, as I just demonstrated. And you can use this very um, easily. You need to install the zone builder package um and then you can create your zones with this function called zb zone and the first argument that it takes is a place so that could be a geographic object or it could be the name of a city and it will automatically look up where that city is um, and then you can define how many circles you want so the default zoning system is this clockboard uh, system that i've described and then you can do stuff with that zone. So you can save it or you can um, visualize it, for example, in this interactive map. So this shows what the zone builder system looks like um, for Buenos Aires. And interestingly, it seems to match fairly well some of the features. So you've got these ring roads. And um, in fact, yeah, the, the zone builder system matches quite well uh, with other um, existing city layouts. OK, so, yeah, this is uh, what you need to do to install the zone builder package. If you're new to R, first you need to install R, which you can look up online. I recommend using the R Studio um, interactive development environment, which uh, can run in browser, um, as I'm demonstrating there. But in terms of um, using the package, yeah, you need to install it and then load it and then you can uh, test it out with uh, some of the functions there and just start generating uh, some maps. OK, um, so, yeah, you can just create zones in one uh, one command. It just uh, produces these um, zoning systems. And uh, there's only two main arguments that it takes, which is center point of the zone and then how many circles um, does it have? And by default, uh, we can see there um, just another uh, quick example. Um, if you look for the help for on the zone builder package with this question mark uh, symbol, um, I can just look at the help for ZB zone, and you can see that uh, by default the number of circles is five, unless you specify differently. So. Um, yeah, that's um, that's how, how it works and that's how you can uh, plot it. Um, another argument that it takes is the area. So if you already have a city boundary, uh, you can provide that and it will um, provide as, as many zones as there are um, to, to capture the whole city and then you can plot it. So, yeah, that's uh, that's how it works and you can save the results and use them in other software. So that's if you've got R. If you don't have R, the exciting thing is this is this is fairly new. We've created a command line tool 
which is called the Zone Builder Rust Crate. And uh, that works in exactly the same way. It's more portable than the R package, so you can use it without needing to uh, install R. And um, yeah, you can um, generate zones from the system command line. Um, and I can just uh, show you that very quickly. I'll make the uh, terminal a bit bigger, but um, uh, let's try this. So zone builder. So I can type that in and by default, it generates uh, some GeoJSON output. Uh, I can go zone builder help. And it gives me the help. That's probably too big, really. So I'm just going to make that a bit smaller. And um, just the example that I've got there is, uh, let's try and get this to work. So um, yeah, here's, here's an example of actually creating some zones. So I'm going to save the output into a zones.geojson format. So that has outputted, that's created a file called zones.geojson. And I can look at that, uh, for example, with less zones.geojson, and there it is. Um, if you want to install the Rust crate, you can just go cargo install um, zone builder, and that will go away to crates.io and um, install it. So this is um, a really reliable and reproducible way of getting zones so yeah that's um been a, a great experience i think we can go beyond this and i think phosphor g is about making um technology and tools as accessible as possible so i've actually opened an issue on the zone builder website on creating um, a python package so if anyone listening is into python uh, please get in touch and we can try and uh, make this uh, zone builder idea available in another and very popular great language. So um, yeah, that's uh, just an idea and you can see the issue there. That's issue 44 in the zone builder repo. So that's, that's impressive. I think technologically that you can run it in R and Rust. The Rust crate needs a little bit of work. So I plan, uh, we plan to work on that over the next few months, but it's definitely minimum viable product ready. To me, the most amazing technologically uh, thing technologically about our project is you can actually run the Zone Builder software in your web browser. So that's a web page at zonebuilders.github.io forward slash Zone Builder Rust. And I'm just going to open that and you can create zone zoning systems anywhere. So let's go to Houston, Texas. You can see I can just locate that. And this is good because um, city definitions, that the definition of a city center is kind of subjective and it may depend on your use case. But let's say uh, central Houston is there. And then Houston's quite a big city. Look at this outer ring road. So we want to capture that so we can increase the number of circles there so that we're capturing the wider Houston area. So um, I can then download that and use that in the uh, web browser. So that's really cool. And uh, then you can read that in, in, in another software. So uh, yeah, we've actually written a paper um, on one specific implementation of the Zone Builder. Uh, using the Zone Builder software, we've come up with this clockboard zoning system, which is the one that I've presented uh, so far, which has 12 uh, radial ring, uh, 12 radial um, segments, and then it has a number of rings. So that's a, a zoning system for urban analysis. And then finally, in terms of next steps, um, we would like to take this further. So can it catch on? Do we need to modify it? Um, and in terms of technology, we want to fix any outstanding issues in the R and Rust implementation. So if you find any of those, let us know. We'd like to add new features, we, but I think most importantly, we'd like to uh, create zone builder implementations in other languages, primarily Python. But um, we have, um, there's many great open source languages. And I think it would be really fantastic to see these added 
to um, the Zone Builder uh, GitHub. So you can see here, we've got um, a GitHub organization and uh, yeah, it would be great to add more implementations. So final thing to say is thanks to everyone. So thanks to people from the GeoRust uh, community, particularly Stefan for helping me out with the, the Rust implementation. Um, and then thanks to the R Spatial community for getting me into programming. And then finally to the OSGEO community for making such great uh, foundation on which we can build. So this wouldn't have been possible without OSGEO. And I've got loads of links at the end uh, for you to check out and use the Zone Builder system from the safety of your own home. So have a great conference, everyone. That's it from me. And I look forward to uh, seeing some of you and hearing feedback um, from the conference as it progresses. So that's it from me. Bye for now. Um, so you have a few questions from Venueless. I've put it in the chat. Feel free to answer them as you will. Thank you. Uh, Robin, uh, do you want to take these? Or? Um, I didn't actually hear the first question, so um, yeah. What was the question? Uh, they're in the chat, but I can read it out. So uh, one of the questions is, um, have you measured whether or not using zones leads to modifiable unit area problem bias? So um, that's a great question. And um, any zoning system is going to lead to a bias. The whole, the whole point is zones are um, like arbitrary usually. So um, the zoning system that we've got obviously will introduce uh, bias. But the good thing about the, the zoning system that we've produced and the zone builder package is that you can control that bias and you will have exactly the same bias in every city. Whereas if I was to compare London and Paris using their own um, different zoning systems, you're going to have different types of um, modifiable area unit bias. So it's a way of highlighting um, modifiable area unit problems rather than trying to like um, ignore it. So that, that's the, um, the short answer. There's a lot you could do with it. So you could use Zone Builder to try to understand the extent of the uh, bias that your zoning system choice is having. So you could run your analysis on one um, zoning system and then if you don't have any other zoning system available, you can just use one of the zoning systems that Zone Builder will create. So it's actually a way to better understand the impact of different zoning systems on the results. That would be my short answer. Yeah, just final uh, one uh, add-on. So I think the great thing is that's like um, a bottom-up approach. It's not really like, okay, we want to influence the elections. Let's cherry pick our zones. It's like, okay, we just have a city center and the size of the city, and that's it. So it's a very fair uh, way to yeah, to divide the city. Um, the second question is, uh, can you use the package without R? Um, and I can uh, help answer a little bit of that. So we have the implementation um, also in Rust, and you can just run it as a command line tool. Um, you can also just run the, uh, the R version as and save the GeoJSON, and then use another uh, and using whatever software you need, you don't need to like directly integrate with R. Um, and if you uh, if you wanted to, for example, call this um, on the web from JavaScript, that's possible um, because the the Rust version compiles to WebAssembly, and in fact, the leaflet demo that we have um, directly calls the JS version. And I don't know if um, you want to add anything to that. Try it out. Yeah, the, it's it's actually quite fun to um, see how how well the zoning system fits with some cities. Um, if you go to um, Erbil in Iraq, it's amazing. It's like the roads follow the contours of the Zone Builder um, package. And also Moscow as well has like a monocentric center. And then the bigger ring roads follow quite well uh, Zone Builder. So just uh, have, a, have a play. 
Um, so the next, the next question is, uh, how would you modify it? What new, what new features are uh, in mind? So, I mean, yeah, I think me and my time, well, probably all of us have ideas on that. Um, we can take it in many different directions. So we're totally open-minded about how to do um, define zoning systems. We did, however, think a lot before we created this default system. So I don't think we came through in the talk, but um, basically the default is that um, you have a, a city centre with a one kilometre grid cell, uh, a, a one kilometre circle, which kind of makes sense. It's easy to understand um, a one kilometre uh, grid, and that's actually the radius is one kilometre, so um, two kilometres in diameter. And then the next one, is two kilometers wider. The next one is three kilometers wider. So it's actually creating this um, triangular number sequence as you get further. And the, the point with that is that density of many urban phenomena reduce the further you go from the city center. So uh, and we've got 12 um, uh, radial uh, divisions, and that's because it's easy to understand. So we went for simplicity. But there's many ways that you can do it. So um, that ZB zone function that takes as an argument uh, how many radii you can control that. You can make, try and make your zones equal area um, and you can control the rate at which um, the uh, circles get bigger. We have also implemented a simple kind of um, square block zoning system and beyond that, no. <laughs> so. I, I'm interested in, in ideas of, of where we go. I think it would be cool to have a single home for many zoning systems, uh, but I can't think of any others uh, off the top of my head. So my time. Maybe good to mention that we we do have like a, a page on GitHub, uh, also discussion page. Maybe uh, Robin could you share the link? Then it's so we between us we shared uh, ideas so for instance how to deal with cities uh, that are neighboring each other and that overlap each other a little bit uh, so how to deal with with uh, small neighborhoods that often form a, a, like a, a center on on their own within a city and that kind of things all those methodological issues and extensions well we discussed them a little bit but well if you have any ideas, let me let us know. Um, and the last question that that's come through is: uh, Is it compatible with Q? I'm not sure what Q is. Just like the letter Q. QGS, I guess. So, I, if that is QGS, and my guess is it is, um, I mean, it's totally compatible because you can download your uh, GeoJSON and then read it into QGIS. Um, if you wanted to, you could create a QGIS uh, plugin. But now we have this amazing web uh, application that you can generate those GeoJSON files um, in, a, in a web browser. So um, that could be an alternative. But for me, another big part of this is this is a learning experience. Like um, it's, it's relatively simple. I mean, there, there are more complicated problems out there than auto generating zoning systems. So this is actually a really good place if someone wants to get started and understand at a low level how to build uh, geographic objects, um, you could try and create a QGIS plugin, um, but it's not on the priority list. Um, I think maybe a more uh, promising approach would be to have an interface to the Rust library, like a Python uh, wrapper around it, and, and then use that. But yeah, we're, we're interested. Well, let's see if there's demand for it first, but I think that's a really good question. Um, and one final thing I can say, I can see it's basically half past, so I guess uh, this may be the final final comment, is um, there are zoning systems defined by global um, global G uh, GIS software, like the S2 library uh, from Google and like Uber's H3. And H3 is very interesting because it basically divides the whole world up into hexagons and pentagons and I think it would be really interesting um, to have that because an advantage with that is that that you have a shared reference whereas with the zone builder 
you have this kind of ambiguity or subjectivity in how you define the city centre. So that's one final uh, possibility for extending it. Thank you, gentlemen, for your presentation. It was really, really good, and I'm sure a lot of people enjoyed it. Uh, but that's the end of your session. Um, we have our next speaker ready to go, if you don't mind. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye, everyone. Thank you.